history of candle pin bowling, no one has ever, ever rolled a perfect game. It's challenging, you know, it's definitely more difficult than 10 pin bowling. I tried to be the first, but it became clear pretty quickly that I wouldn't make the history books. Instead, I'll settle for bowling in a historic alley. <laughs> Two for my first time. <laughs> and I think that might be the coolest thing for a lot of people is just the fact that this is a living piece of history. Nate Swain owns what is believed to be the oldest candlepin bowling alley in New Hampshire. For more than a century, the red building has stared out over the Connecticut River in Woodsville. Nate bought it two years ago as he was graduating from college and renamed it Room 111. That was my college freshman dorm room. And uh, yep, it was number 111. Not bad. Candlepin bowling is a unique New England tradition. It got its start in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1880, but never spread far beyond its Yankee borders. In rural Woodsville, the bowling alley has long been the only game in town. I came here as a kid. We came here as a kid. Our family, my, our folks would bring us here bowling. So I'm almost 60, and so almost 60 years I've been bowling here. Marilyn Blaisdell can trace her family history through memorabilia displayed on the walls, snapshots of the early days when Woodsville was a thriving train town, one of the major hubs in the North Country. Once the tracks were pulled, Woodsville fell on hard times, but the bowling alley endured. Nate, who also bowled here as a kid, determined to preserve its 102-year-old history. And this is a picture of the alley in 1944. So at the time, there were only two lanes. Bowlers kept score by hand using these paper score books. So these are dated 1954-55. Bowling pins have evolved too. The old timer pins less cylindrical than today's pins. Uh, you know, check out the pin setting machines. The rickety pin setting machines, the originals. It's all wood and steel, you know, it's the original 1950s equipment, and uh, it's just really cool stuff, you know, and it's kind of got that charm. Unfortunately, charm doesn't keep the machines running. Sometimes we bowl and the lanes will break down, and I'll just tell the girls, we're lucky we're even here doing it. This equipment is ancient, and these guys get it going like that. When Nate took over, he got a crash course in machine mechanics. Oh yeah, no, we, we do everything pretty much here. It's uh, It was a steep learning curve to figure out how all these things work. And good luck with replacement parts. Nate either cannibalizes parts from competitors that have closed, or makes them from scratch. One local machinist make several parts for us by bringing them the old broken, beat up part and saying, help. If all else fails, he wings it. The good thing about it, being this old, is uh, sometimes the only thing you need is a little duct tape. <laughs> and there's plenty of it on here, if you look. <laughs> Before these machines, pin boys manually reset the pins. Uh, you can see one of the, the pin boy standing right there. You're about as likely to throw a strike in candlepin bowling as a major league pitcher is to throw a no-hitter. It's that rare and purposely more challenging than traditional 10-pin bowling. The guy that invented candlepin uh, thought that regular bowling was too easy. And because it's harder to knock down the pins with smaller balls, you get three chances instead of two. But for many here at Room 111, it's not about strikes and spares and scores. It's about hearkening back to the golden age of bowling. One of the biggest 
benefits I have here is just all the memories that people have of this place. It's the nostalgia. Oh!